Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we finished adding the confirm email service or confirm email feature inside the registration method. And now we want to test this in our application. But just before we run our application and test the confirm email feature, we also want to make sure we add a condition here in the login method so once the user registers and he tries to log in and if the email is not confirmed then the login page the login form should display an error saying that the user needs to first confirm his email before he logs into the application that's because the user might enter the valid cred credentials that's the username and password but we would still not allow him to log in into the application because the user has not yet confirmed his email so let's just add the logic here where we confirm the user's password and user uh, in this condition just below that the first thing that we want to do is add an condition that is to check if the email is confirmed so as soon as we find the user we verify the password if it is valid what we do is we check if that user's email is confirmed and we can do that by calling the dot is email confirmed method on the user and what we are doing is if the email is not confirmed then we are going to add that into our model state error and then we want to return an unauthorized error back to the user unauthorized response back to the client or to the user with a new login error message that is we sent you a confirmation email please confirm your registration so the user will be able to see that message inside the alert pop because any error that is returned by the server will be displayed in that alert box on top of the form login form so and also one more thing that you need to edit here this roles we can put this inside our if condition that's because only if the user is valid then we would want to get the roles we don't want to first get the roles of the user that also saves some resources in our memory that if it is not valid why do you want to execute that uh, role of uh, to get the roles from the table we will first check if the user's password and the user's detail is valid then we execute the following condition so to get the user role we will just make sure that we do it after we check the email is confirmed now let's save this file go ahead and build your application again so that these new changes are applied to our application so i have two build errors let me go ahead and check this so there is a semicolon missing here so let me just remove this extra bracket that i have here let's save this now and let me go ahead and build this so the build was successful just before we go and run this application we need to make sure that we fix something in our client app so let's go back to client app go to our source and then open the application as the app folder and go to your services in the account services we forgot to add the to get the username and user role from our from the local storage and set the values to this username and user role we have done it for login status but we have not done it for username and user role so all we have to do here is just add two lines of code which is username dot next we will set it to the local storage item username and user role we will set it to the local storage user role key the value of that key user role so let's save this let's go ahead and run this application now so application is running let's go ahead and try to register a user uh, let me just go ahead open the azure data studio and delete this user tech howdy so i can create it again 
the filthy test information for the username tech howdy and now let's click submit so as of now we don't have any confirmation message that is popping up saying that the new user is registered but as we proceed in the video tutorial series we will create that as well but for now since we didn't get any errors we have to assume that there was no errors and the user was successfully created let's go back to our database run the query and we will see that the new user with the username tech howdy is created but the email confirmation is zero which means email is not confirmed so to confirm the email we need to check our email address and as you see i have a new email that was received and all i have to do now is click on that email since i'm sending it from a development environment obviously google is not familiar with it so it's going to say be careful but for now we'll click look safe and then i will click on this link here which says please confirm your email by clicking this link when we click this link what should happen is we will be redirected to the confirmation email page but just before that let's go to our inspect tab before we click the link let's try to log in without confirming the email and what do we get here we get we use the username and the password let's click submit it's saying invalid details supplied could not log in that's because if you go to the client app and the login component here inside the login component the error message we have set it to invalid details supplied we need to change this if we want to display what message is being sent by the server when a user whose email is not confirmed is trying to log in because the actual message you can see the message here if you click on this on your network tab on login and go to the response here inside the response you will see we send you an confirmation email please confirm your registration with tech howdy to log in so that's the actual message that is being sending but we are overwriting that error with our own error here so let's change this before we go ahead and click on the confirmation link to see that message inside this error box here so if we go back to application and we check the name of the key to access this value is a login error login error is basically the key that stores the login error message so in order to get the value from this login error key what we are going to do here first of all we will delete this error message and we will say our error is this error here that is the error that we received dot the error array inside the error array we have something called as login error so that's all that's going to be displayed now inside this error alert box here so let's try to log in now hopefully we should get this message now and here so now the error that is returned is being displayed we sent you a confirmation email please log in so in case if your user tries to log in without registering the email without registry without confirming the registration they will see this error and now they understand they have to check the email so now i will go back check my email and click here now when i click here i'll be redirected to the login confirmation page which says oh thank you your email is confirmed you can successfully log in you have full access to products and services let's click on the login option here now we are redirected to the login page let's go ahead and try to log in and let's type the password do you think we'll get an error when we log in now no we can successfully log in and now we can see this uh, user name displayed here as well because we fixed that because earlier in our account service we forgot to add this values to set these values to our behavior subject objects here so now every time when we log in we will be able to see it for the first time itself 
Now guys, there is one problem that we have in this application and the problem is that our login is not yet persistent, which means whenever I try to change the links or I try to refresh, for now I don't have any products link yet, but whenever I try to refresh, I'll be logged out. So my login is not persistent. If I go to my inspect tab and I try to access local storage dot uh, get item and I'm trying to get the JWT token so I have a token and if I try to check the login status that's also one which means the user is logged in but if I refresh this page my login is not persistent I'm logged out so now I cannot go back to the login logged in page and even though if I try to access my local storage it says one and my JW token still exists so the local storage is not yet clear because we have not logged out but our application has reloaded again which means the login is not persistent and to make this login persistent in our application I will show you guys in the next video tutorial how we will do that using AuthGuard. So for now, this is the end of this video tutorial. Once again, just a reminder that when you are using your API key, when you're creating your API key in SendGrid, make sure you change the API key inside your app settings of your ASP.NET Core application because I am going to get rid of this key when I am going to publish this inside or I'm going to add this new code inside the DevOps repo. So you will not see this key and this username. Use your own username and your own SendGrid key in order for this email service to work. So thank you very much and hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe my channel Tech Howdy.